find a mug, pick it up all day long, you'll have big bucks? Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out more. So whether you're already reselling or maybe new at it and you've been hearing a lot about, about this hashtag mug life, there's a little more to it than meets the eye. You don't just pick up any mug that's out there and flip it on eBay and suddenly make a lot of money. There are ins and outs to selling mugs that you need to know about. In this video, I'm going to share with you different types of mugs so that when you find a mug worthy of selling, you will know how to describe it so that the people that want to buy it can actually find it. Hey there, my name is Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. And if you are wanting to live that mug life or just learn more about reselling on eBay, make sure you go down there and hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you don't miss out on any of the content that I put out. So not only will I be talking to you about the different styles of mugs, but also the different features on mugs. So let's, oh, and also I wanted to let you guys know if you're looking for ways to clean mugs that have like gray spoon marks inside, there's something called Barkeeper's Friend that can help you get the um, stains out. First type of mug is the novelty mug. This is a mug that's got some sort of character or phrase, something that a person would enjoy that's maybe speaks to their personality, their favorite animal, their zodiac, what have you. Um, so this one today will be terrific, is a dinosaur novelty mug. Heat cold reveal mugs are really fun. However, when I usually find them, the black part um, that reveals when it gets hot or cold, that black part is all chipped or peeled away because somebody might have put it in the, in the dishwasher and it got messed up. So a heat and cold reveal mug can be fun if you find one that's not messed up. Next is the travel mug. Now some travel mugs have a handle, some don't. This is a travel mug, usually it's insulated has a lid so that you can carry it with you and not get spilt on. Most, some of these you may know already. Ceramic mug is just a straight up, it's a mug. Some novelty mugs are ceramic mugs, some are not. And then the difference between a ceramic mug and a porcelain mug is that a porcelain mug will be a bit thinner and maybe a nicer quality. Sometimes they will be fine bone china. They'll say something like that on them. They're a little easier to chip perhaps uh, and usually are a little bit better quality. So this is a diner style mug. I recently sold a Camel Cigarette Diner mug. And the diner mug is a really thick, it takes that ceramic mug and it really makes it thicker. It's got it's got to be able to take a beating because it's in a diner. Lots of people are using it. It's going, getting thrown in the wash. And I mean, so they've really got to be sturdy. So this is a diner style mug. And you can kind of see there's like almost a curvature to the to the side of it. Um, not all of them have that, but, but frequently they do. Next are espresso mugs or also called demitas, which they are little tiny mugs used for drinking like a shot of espresso. Um, but a demitas basically means small mug, <laughs> small mug. Another type of mug that you see out there sometimes, I don't see them too frequently, are stackable mugs. And these are mugs that do exactly what it sounds like, they stack. And people will buy solo stackable mugs if they've got one that's missing from their set. So don't discount them if you find one stackable mug out there because somebody might be looking for it. So next is the, I call it a vintage travel mug, the wide bottom type mugs that looks sort of like this. Vintage mugs, before typical travel mugs that we have now, this is what I thought of as a travel mug before, you know, like from the 80s and so, because it was very flat on the bottom so it wouldn't tip over easily and then the, the top part was really narrow so it wouldn't come splat, spilling out, sloshing out. Um, so this is a wide bottom travel mug. It always reminds me of this song by Queen, the wide bottom girls or something like that. I think it's called something else. All right, we've got glass mugs. Again, these are probably some that you already know, but they can come in different colors. They can be translucent, transparent. They could have etching on them. Then the next type is a double walled mug. You can see there where it's a little bit thicker. Sometimes there's an area that's kind of hollowed out between the two, um, 
Well, I think that's the way it's made. Yeah, because it's got two walls. So that way the heat doesn't transfer all the way out. Sometimes these are glass. Sometimes they are made of something else. But you'll be able to see, or sometimes they'll, they'll have them labeled as double-walled mugs if you can't see that they are double-walled. The next mugs I wanted to talk to you about are shaving mugs. So if you see a mug that looks like this, there's two types I'm going to talk to you about. This type that's got this kind of knob handle on the edge that people, people, if you're shaving, you put the soap in and you use the brush and then you're putting the soap on your face or the shaving cream. Um, that's one style. And then another is this vintage style. This picture came from Reuse It Emporium. This, this is a vintage style where the soap would go in a portion of it and then you know you would dip your brush in and so that's another style of shaving mug. This mug is often confused with the mustache mug which we're going to talk about in just a second but this one is a shaving mug and we'll talk about the mustache mug. So the mustache mug originated in the 19th century when men started waxing their mustaches um, because they didn't want to take a drink out of their coffee mug or, mug or teacup and have that hot liquid melt the wax in their mustache and ruin their perfectly coiffured facial hair. So they created these mustache mugs that had this kind of a guard on the on the glass or cup and then a little opening to sip out of so that their mustache wouldn't get messed up. So they are, I have seen some more contemporary ones, but you'll also find antique ones as well. Another style of mug is the footed mug where it looks like it's got a bit of a a foot on the bottom where it kind of comes out. Sometimes a shaving mug will have a foot at the bottom of it, kind of like a thicker base that comes down off of it. Before we take another sip, I want to hear from you. What kind of mugs have you found that you have sold? And I will leave a link right up here to some of my best mug sales. Plastic mugs, these are again fairly self-explanatory, um, but you'll see cartoon characters, but then there's also um, Tupperware and sort of brands that that gear for towards campers might have different kinds of plant, plastic mugs. Next is the pour over mug. That's where you've got the top part that you put your tea leaves or maybe your coffee in. I think it's more for coffee though, but I guess people could use it for tea. Usually tea is in the water seeping. The pour over, you'll put the coffee inside and then pour the hot water over it into the mug. Stoneware mugs, and I have homemade mugs on here as well, so they kind of go together. Stoneware mugs are a little more rustic looking. They can be handmade, but not always. And they've got, you know, this sort of style to it, kind of a mottled, sometimes a speckled or freckled look to them. So these are stoneware mugs. And then handmade mugs, which also can be stoneware depending. Um, they almost look like they've been made like a spiral like thrown on the pottery wheel and pinched out and heavily glazed so those are handmade and stoneware mugs the next type of mug is an enamel mug which generally has a metal underlayer and then an enamel I guess they bake it on an enamel over that layer sometimes when I find these the enamel has chipped away but it doesn't always matter depending on the subject of the mug these are the ones are always fun three-dimensional mugs where it takes the shape of the object say a, a donut or a dinosaur and it's actually the physical shape of a dinosaur so those tend to do pretty well so metal and copper mugs, I just threw up a copper mug here. Sometimes they're stainless steel, sometimes they're smooth, sometimes they're pebbled or hammered looking like this. And they've become more popular with the drink, the Moscow Mule. <laughs> Next are soup mugs. You see a lot of them where they have like the potato soup or it'll say like soup all over it. Um, that's one style. This is another soup mug where they're wider and a little bit flatter. Um, than a normal coffee mug. I included a couple things here that weren't exactly coffee mugs because you might find them in the mug section and they can do well. And first is a beer stein. And uh, I, I have sold a number of beer steins. So this is a <laughs> House of Stark beer stein. Sometimes they have lids, sometimes they don't have lids. Uh, teacups. I don't find as many teacups as I used to. Um, but depending on the quality and subject matter, they can do well. Most of these, the nicer ones, are usually 
porcelain or bone china. And then here, some coffee mugs do have a cup and saucer. And so the last part of this is just about the descriptive feature. So when you're trying to describe your mug, um, we talked about the footed mug where it's got that kind of lip out at the bottom. A pedestal mug, sometimes you can interchange the foot and the pedestal, um, but this is more of a traditional pedestal mug where it's got a base and it's got like a thinner layer in the middle uh, before it gets to the base of the mug. And when you're describing your handle, some people like an open-handled mug where either at the top or the bottom, it doesn't all the way connect, so it's easier to slide your hand in. The traditional type mug has this sort of closed handle. A curved handle mug, it almost reminds me of like a half heart where it curves up at the top and then brings back down to the bottom. There are no handle mugs or handle-less mugs. And then there's an O handle mug where it's got just a space for your finger to poke through. Sometimes the O is bigger, sometimes it's smaller. And I'll link this post in the description down below because this is on my website, texasgaltreasures.com, for you to go and reference if you are trying to describe a mug that you are selling. And if you've got any more tips for us, let us know down in the comment section. Let me know, were any of these new for you? And if you've got another type of mug that I left out, leave a comment down below and let us know. And I will talk to you on the next one. Bye, everybody.